Hello, and welcome to the July market update from Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan. I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. June was a bit of a mixed month for your investments. We saw markets here in the U.S. go both down with the Dow and up with the S&P and the NASDAQ. We saw bond markets pull back a little bit as rates increased. And abroad, both developed markets and emerging markets pulled back, significantly in the case of emerging markets. So what's going on? We've had a couple of good months. Why is this month so much more mixed? Well, if you look at the fundamentals, they're still actually quite good. Here in the U.S. in particular, we expect to see second quarter growth step up after an already acceptable first quarter. We see job growth continuing strongly. We see consumer spending actually accelerating. Business investment remains solid. In other words, all of the foundations of the economy are pretty much there, which is basically what drove the Fed to declare victory in its last meeting. On the other hand, there are some headwinds to markets. The first is that self-same Fed. When the Fed declared victory, said everything was actually pretty good, that led markets to believe that they were going to raise rates faster than the markets had thought. And that's typically a headwind for financial markets, especially the stock market. Second of all, even though we are getting faster growth and even though everything is solid, there are signs of slowing out there. The housing market, for example, We've seen affordability pull back. We've seen housing prices increase, which is great, but we've seen them increase faster than wages, which makes housing less affordable. When you combine that with rising rates, this is another headwind to the housing market, which is a significant contributor to the economy as a whole. When you look at rising rates, it's not just the housing market that's affected. It's every sector of the economy. And from an investment point of view, the higher rates go, the more of a negative effect that can have on stocks. Again, not something to worry about right away, but this is something that at the margin will make a difference, and maybe we're starting to see that. The other thing that's out there, of course, is policy concerns. Now, while there's been some very good news out there, the Italian government, for example, has formed, and we've seen the North Korean situation pull back from the brink, nonetheless, the big policy out there that's really rattling markets is trade. The administration's policies are now provoking responses from other countries, responses described as retaliation. And that's something that's making markets very concerned. While there's certainly the chance that this could get worse, the overwhelming probability remains that, in fact, this is going to be resolved peacefully and may even end up being constructive. So it's not something to worry about yet, but it is something that has markets on edge. So as we move into the next month, What's going to happen? Well, we know that the fundamentals are solid, and historically, that has both cushioned markets in times of trouble and provided positive impetus when things calm down. Right now, we have a situation where we may end up in trouble, but again, the chances are it won't. And actually, that could end up being very positive as that situation resolves. With that, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I'll talk to you about it next month. Thanks for watching.